The cool winter weather is the perfect time to put away the last Christmas items, do some deep cleaning in the kitchen, revive old candles, and make the home fresh and beautiful. Even though we put most of our Christmas, actually all of our Christmas decorations away on January 6th, which, which is <laughs> Three Kings Day, for some reason we kept this Weihnachtspyramide, this German, um, I don't even know what to call it, out for a long time because it's so beautiful and I don't know. And then I had to climb in the attic and get the original box that I always keep to stuff it away and to keep it free from damaging and I am taking off the fans, wrapping them in the original paper that this Christmas pyramid, if you want to say that in English, came in and I'm taking out the little candle holders. When you light the candles, the pyramid will actually turn and it has the Christmas story on it. So it's really beautiful. I got that from Germany some years ago and we bring it out every year. Part of what I really like to do is, and you can see the box back there, is put my Christmas items away. I don't like to use disposable one-way items. I like the sort of heirloom items and Christmas decorations that we bring out every single year. Sometimes we have a different theme and sometimes we do the same theme over and over again. But here it goes into the box with the paper to keep it protected until next year. And I find that just, yeah, that's just the heritage kind of homemaking that I like. Instead of doing something that's plastic and throw away and really cheap. I mean, these wooden Christmas pyramids are not cheap, but they will last you a lifetime if you take good care of it, which I'm doing here. And I'm closing it. Oops, I need to take the top off because otherwise I can't close the box. Now I can close the box. And I have a string around it to keep it closed. Just so, and I can also carry it that way. Then I have some Christmas themed tablecloths and even though we didn't use as many this year, I don't even know why, but for some reason we didn't. And part of using items is that yes, they get used and there are some stains on it because this runner we had on our table and it's just invariably, you know, you get some stains on it. But that's also part of having it and using it. I mean, why would you have decoration that you're not using. And even those, though these are heirloom tablecloths, really old ones, antique ones, I do like to use them because um, I don't want to sit in the cabinets and, and tucked away and not using them. And I've heard from many of you that their mothers had heirloom items, china, silverware, whatever, and they weren't using it and when they passed all of a sudden their children found all this beautiful stuff and they're like why didn't we ever use it so i don't like to put those delicate items in the washer and i will hand wash them also that way i can really spot treat the stains and give those some rubbing instead of wearing out the entire item I don't actually mind the hand washing because I also get to look at these beautiful items. As you can see here, I have a laundry detergent from the laundress, which I don't normally use. I don't remember if somebody gave it to us or if I bought it, but it's really heavily scented, which I don't like for our everyday items. And I just use it for this because this is the one for the whites and it actually works quite well, except for that it has a very strong smell that I don't like. But if I'm using it for those heirloom tablecloths, they're gonna sit tucked away somewhere for a year and they'll probably air out and not have a strong scent. And also we're not wearing them on our bodies, they're on the table and that works well. So 
I'm going to give them a good rinse here. And even though I wring them out, I do want to be careful because you don't want to stretch the fabrics unnecessarily. Some of them are just really thin and delicate. And I'd like to keep them for as long as possible while still be using them. So I'm, I'm striking a balance here between using them and not wanting to wear them out. I also don't want to put them in the dryer, which is why here from our coat closet, I am getting a clothes rack that we use to dry clothes sometimes in the winter when it's raining and these little tablecloths. It's a German made foldable. It's actually really neat foldable clothes rack and I'm giving my tablecloth a bit of a shake to get rid of some of the wrinkles that you get from wringing them out and hang them. What you can't see here is that underneath this piece of furniture that's actually another heirloom from my grandparents that I cherish so much is a heater vent and this is the perfect spot for drying clothes because there is a heat source that blows air, warm air, right onto the clothes and they dry really quickly in the winter and also make the air in the house a little bit better because you do get moisture in the air and in the winter when you have a heater vent going, the air in the house can get really dry and I'm just tucking that away. I'm at that age where sometimes I think everything is great and then I put my glasses on and then I see all the dirt and this is what happens in the kitchen. I don't really see all the dirt, but then with my glasses, I'm like, oh no, I need to clean all of this. The tile backsplash behind our stove, when you're cooking, there's some splattering and some little tiny specks of dirt. And this was really the time for me to put my glasses on and give this a deep cleaning after all the cooking for the holidays when you don't really have time to do this deeper cleaning. And I'm actually really happy the grout that we used for this tile backsplash is a cold uh, silver gray and it doesn't really show the dirt so much. It doesn't ever get grimy looking or dingy looking. I'm really happy about that. And I did remember that my husband and I put the tile on ourselves. Um, on the evening of our anniversary. <laughs> so then I have this little crock here for my wooden utensils and I use a copper scouring pad from Germany that I like to use to get all the little pieces of dirt off of it. I could have stuck it in the dishwasher I realized afterwards but then I don't have anything for my utensils and then they're just sitting there and so this is just as quick and easy for me to do. Cleaning the bottom here and that looks so much better. There we go. And then I'm giving the counter a quick wipe because as you're cleaning sometimes stuff falls off and sits on the counter. Once I'm done with that I am going to revive some old candles. I like to make my own beeswax candles and I simply use these little jars that I think I found at Ikea, they're really inexpensive and just the perfect size for making your own beeswax candles. And sometimes I use beeswax and soy wax. And when you're using them, sometimes the wick gets buried and you have so much beeswax in there still that I'm going to reuse the beeswax. As I'm melting it, I'm fishing out little old bits and pieces here. And once the beeswax is completely melted and I can see what's going on and I have cleaned the beeswax. I'm adding new wicks. I removed the old wicks, the little metal bases of the wicks and some beeswax pellets. I will leave a link in the description box below where you can find those pellets. And then I have some of these little nifty attachments to keep the wick in place. If you don't have that, you can also use some chopsticks that are still attached and they're actually perfect for keeping the wicks upright and in the middle of your little jars. And then I'm just going to add some more of those beeswax pellets. And while I'm melting this, I'm just reminded how wonderful 
beeswax smells and this is just one of the many reasons I like beeswax candles. In another jar I am having some more beeswax pellets just about maybe a tablespoon a few teaspoons just a little bit and I'm gonna melt that too and I'm gonna show you in a second what I'm doing with that. Here we go. I have melted it and now I'm adding flax seed oil. I just learned that Trader Joe's discontinued this item, which I'm so bummed about, but I'll find another source. Barleans is another great source. Adding the flax seed oil to the beeswax and because I had it out of the fridge, it hardened the beeswax. I have to remelt it and I'm going to use that as a spoon butter once it's completely incorporated. Well, spoon butter is just one way to describe it, but it's just for wood, wood oil or wood ointment, if you will. With all the cooking and everything that's going on during the holidays, after the holidays is the perfect time to give everything a bit of a do-over and give it some TLC. And I love using this beeswax, well, flaxseed, linseed combination because the linseed really goes in deep into the wood grain and then I can also treat my wooden utensils, my spatulas, and give them a little bit love and care and some grease to make them last longer. For that I'm also using an old linen rag. Another thing that is never on my favorite list here is cleaning out the filter of my dishwasher. You know sometimes during the holidays we have the dishwasher going twice a day, well months, once a day maybe twice a day is all exaggerated and the filter filters stuff out but then stuff gets stuck in the filter. I don't know what your dishwasher looks like but we have this fancy Miele and you might scoff at the price tag but it just does a really good job. It's super quiet and it's really easy to use and likewise the filter is really easy to remove and clean. For that I'm using an old toothbrush that has been spent and instead of just giving it into the trash I like to use these old toothbrushes for cleaning jobs like this. And then this is the super grimy part and I know it's not the prettiest thing on video. However, it needs to be done. And this is really the time of year for me to do this. Now I'm gonna put that back. Actually, it screws in really easily and nicely. And it has two little arrows that I need to line up to make sure it sits in there tight. And that is that. And I'll just put the toothbrush in the dishwasher as well to get that clean. It's also a good time to clean my aprons to give them a good wash. I sometimes like to wipe wet hands on my aprons so the front of them sometimes gets a little bit dirty and the long strings in the back I like to tie in a knot so nothing gets tangled up in the washer while I wash them. And it would be a waste to just put them, I have three of those that I'm putting in the wash right now and it would just be a waste to put them in there by themselves. So I'm going to add some other clothes. We don't have a fancy laundry room. This is what we have. It's a shed on the outside of the house. It's an add-on to our 1910 home and we have the washer and dryer in there. The washer is an older Bosch that we actually got used and I think it's over 20 years old but it still is going strong and it does a really good job and it's really efficient. I'm sticking some of my husband's shirts in there and clothes so that everything can rub a little bit, which actually gets this cleaning done better than if you have only a few items. Um, a full washer is always a little bit better for these high efficiency, I'm sorry, high efficiency, I can't even talk, washers. Here's my laundry detergent and then I'm going to get this going. I love the little fancy light in our washer. So there we go. And once these are washed, because it's going to be raining, I also want to hang them indoors on this clothes rack. You can see my heirloom 
tablecloths there are my Christmas items and here are my aprons they came out great they're not as dirty and now they're fresh for not quite spring yet but you know what I'm talking about it's not quite time to do a spring cleaning but it's just the kind of the lull time between the holidays and springtime I like to give those a good shake to not get as many wrinkles and I have this thing about hanging things in a really neat way that's just how I am but as you can see here there's a little tangling here with the sleeves but other than that the um, ties in the back didn't get all entangled and this is my cross back apron that's a dip a little bit different to hang so I'm going to hang it over the back sides here and have it at an angle so that the shoulder straps can lie flat and it doesn't get all weird I mean I could just iron it up with a hot iron and touch it up later but I like to keep my work as minimal as possible if I can and hanging my husband's laundry as well. As you can see, I am being observed and monitored by my dog. The candles have hardened. I can take the holders off and the chopsticks that hold up the wicks and just remove them and cut the wicks so that I can light the candles. And as you can see, I have some lighter ones and some darker ones. That's just beeswax. Beeswax is a natural product and depending on where you get it, it might have color variations, which I think is just so beautiful. And I'm gonna light a candle here before I get cooking. And it's just so homey and nice and comfy and cozy to have a candle in your kitchen as it's getting dark outside. My aprons have dried and I'm hanging them up in my little blue broom cabinet here that is in dire need of organizing and I think I'm going to do a video later how I'm going to do that because I feel like this space is very inefficient as opposed to whatever else I have in my kitchen. This is something that has been on my to-do list for a long time and I will take you along as I actually do that. So aprons go in there. Now I do want to touch up my Christmas tablecloth with a hot iron to get the wrinkles out and what's nice about it is, is that the, I when I put them away I tend to forget about them and then next year when I take them out it's almost like oh no I haven't ironed them I need to do that when I just want to put them out and decorate the home with them and it's really nice to put things away in a well cared for way this is a heavier linen cotton fabric that is a little bit harder to iron I could have used some steam or a little bit of water but I'm just going to iron it on both sides and get most of the wrinkles out and I think these were hand embroidered I mean just by the look of it it looks like somebody and I don't know who did this so here is an example of an unironed tablecloth but I like to keep my delicate tablecloths in specific paper that keeps them from getting yellowish or you know getting kind of weird so I wrap them up to protect them and I have a few more as you can see and then they go back into this cabinet here until next year around Christmas time this is a German book that uses only five ingredients for all sorts of cleaning and things around the house I think it's baking soda lemon juice vinegar and one or two more I can't remember which ones but anyways I get a lot of inspiration from this book as to how to make your own cleaning products and this one here is for my oven I am using washing soda a few tablespoons Actually, no, this is baking soda. And now I'm adding washing soda, other way around. <laughs> Here's the washing soda. It gets a little lumpy because I don't use it very often. And it sits in the bottom of my cabinet where I have my aprons. And, you know, you just can't avoid that. It gets a little bit lumpy. So 
I have to convince it to come out of that small hole there. I don't want a bigger hole because I don't want to spill it accidentally. To that I'm adding some cell sets, not a whole lot, just a little bit here. And a little bit of water to mix a paste that I will be using to clean my oven door. I'll show you that in just a moment. And I don't know if you can see it on video, but with all the roasting and baking and all the things that we did for the holidays and just right after, there's a lot of splatters and just really caked on dirt. I'm really stubborn when it comes to cleaners. I am trying to avoid having to use super chemical, harsh cleaners that are bad for our health and for the environment and most of the time really unnecessary. I like to try to use natural cleaners as much as I can, just like in this case. So I'm adding the paste here and let it sit overnight. The next morning it is very dry, so I need a wet wash rag or um, Swedish sponge to get it all off. And it hasn't really done the job as well as I would have liked to. Here is my copper scrubber from Redeker that when wet is actually not scratchy. To that I'm adding some bonami powder and just going over those spots here in circles, it's glass and it shouldn't scratch. But again, I want to be careful and I can just spot clean some of these areas. Then I follow up with a, another wet rag and actually there's something there that didn't feel good. <laughs> actually, I think it did a really good job. I know that I could do this more often, but you know, there's also deep cleaning and this came out pretty perfect. I don't know if you can see it. There's still a few spots here, but the glass is all nice and clean. Once everything is clean and fresh, I like to add some fresh greenery. This is a lot of boxwood from our garden that grows just like weeds and it's the perfect greenery for our kitchen here. Thank you so much for following along as I am preparing the home for spring and making it all fresh and clean. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank mm -hmm. you.